you know, there's a lot of tools out there for performance testing, uh, PageSpeed Insights, Pingdom Tools, uh, GT Metrics. There's just tons of them. Um, but they sometimes get overloaded or sometimes they're inconsistent. And sometimes it's just nice to be able to go in and do it yourself and not have to sit there and wait five minutes for a performance test to run when you can do it in one or half a second, depending on how fast your page is. So here's my demo site that I use for lots of fun stuff. And so the first thing we do is we right click on the page and hit inspect. And you can pretty much right click anywhere and that inspect option should be available. You can also sometimes use control shift I, I believe on a Mac it's con command shift C. And so we've looked at the elements section before, but we're going to go over to the network tab this time. And right now there's nothing. Yay. Uh, so the first thing I always do is disable the cache. So that makes sure that we get an actual real world test without the browser caching everything like it's supposed to. Um, so we do that first and then we just hit refresh and let it do its thing. Um, and so it's going to be a little slower just because we're recording and streaming and all that. Um, here's what it'll look like. And we've got all sorts of um, resources that came in. It'll tell us down here at the bottom, we've got 40 total things that loaded on this page total of 703 kilobytes, which is about a quarter of the average page weight. Um, this can sometimes be confusing, this resources bit. That's actually the uncompressed size, and so you don't really have to worry about that. Um, that's for like JavaScript and CSS and that kind of stuff. You can compress it with gzip or Brotly, um, which is usually done automatically and is a whole nother topic, um, but that's why we see you know, that it only transferred 700 kilobytes and then it ended up being double that almost. So then the finish time is equivalent to what you'll see in some places as the fully loaded time. And it's not super useful if you're using a lot of asynchronous stuff, especially lazy loading or deferred or asynchronous loading for JavaScript and CSS, which are all great for performance. Um, so what you really want is these next two numbers, the DOM content loaded and the load time. Um, so DOM content loaded is basically saying, hey, this is when all the important stuff to view the page loaded in. And load is usually closer to that, but it's when the page is actually ready to go. So if there's a difference between those, I believe it usually means, and someone will probably correct me if I'm wrong, and I'm not perfect, so I could be, but I believe that's the difference um, caused by JavaScript executing on the page. And so whenever you've got JavaScript, and most pages do, it's going to be doing something with the page, and so it's not ready until some of that JavaScript has run and done what it needs to do. Um, so let's go ahead and hit refresh again just to see if it's any better. Not much, so that's being pretty consistent for us. And so, yeah, those are the main, the main two, again, that I look at are DOM content and the load time. So those are the, the ones that you're trying to improve. Of course, some of the ways you can do that is by reducing the number of requests, reducing the size of those requests. So, you know, stuff like image optimization, JavaScript and CSS compression, all of those play in there. Um, you can also, uh, scroll through and look at the waterfall to kind of pinpoint if there's particular things that are being slower than others. Um, so the page itself is is the very top one that you'll see, and it's loading what looks to be ludicrously fast. Um, you can choose to display the time column, which tells you exactly how long it took total. So you might have things like, uh, why doesn't it want to come back and hover? There we go. Um, the DNS lookup, the initial connection time, SSL, even though it speeds things up, it does have some overhead to start that connection. Um, and then you'll hear people sometimes talk about the TTFB, that's the time to first byte. It's basically the time that 
your web server spends thinking about what it's going to send you. So whether that's um, grabbing stuff from the database or running some PHP code, all of that's involved in there. And this is just ludicrously fast. 20 milliseconds is kind of blowing my mind right now. Um, I didn't even know that was possible on this server. So total was 172 milliseconds, which also is pretty lightning fast. Google will usually recommend somewhere, I think, around two to 300 milliseconds. But that's if you can get under that, you're doing something right. A lot of things right, actually. Um, so again, the waterfall will help you kind of pinpoint, you know, if there's something that's being a little extra slow, um, like this WP statistics hit. So naturally, um, something like that is going to be a little slower. That's probably asynchronous and not anything really to worry about. Um, but it helps you pinpoint those sorts of things that are slower. Um, up a little bit higher here, uh, we can also narrow it down. Um, your top three things that are going to use up, you know, or account for most of this uh, space or bandwidth usage are going to be JavaScript, CSS, and images. So you can toggle any of these to, to narrow it down a little bit. And so when we do that, we also see that these numbers down here change. And so we see that we've got 14 JavaScript files. Uh, 13 CSS files, and seven images loading on this page. And it's using lazy loading, so we m probably have more than that, but that's what loaded immediately on first request. Um, and again, you can go through each of those and go, okay, you know, are there any that are looking like they're taking longer than others? Um, and kind of dig into more of that. But one of the main reasons I use, I mean, that's more for advanced users, but one of the main things I recommend using this is simply so you can get a real world feel for how your page is actually loading. Because sometimes GT metrics will say, hey, your page is taking five seconds to load. Then you come in here in the dev tools and you go, uh, well, it loaded in a second and a half for me. So what's up with that? So again, some of the, Testing tools can be inconsistent. Sometimes they're under a lot of load. Um, they're processing tons and tons of requests. Well, tons isn't even really accurate. Millions of requests a day. Um, and so depending on how busy things are for their server, for their network and all that, it can really make a big difference on the consistency of those test results. So doing it yourself gives you something more real world to balance that against and see if they're off the wall crazy or if they're actually accurate. 